Hauntingly Humdrum, a Slice of Life Halloween Anthology. This episode, Remembrance. David paused outside the cold steel wrapped doors to the hospice. To an observer, you'd see an elegant young man arranging his clothes beneath a dim streetlight. But David was preparing himself to pass through those doors. The wind tugged at his golden hair. The shiver that went through his body wasn't due to the cold fingers of fall that probed him. It was this place. A place filled with the sick and the dying. He wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for her. It was no place for a fae. May I help you, sir? The gentle southern intonation of the nurse broke through David's musings. Um, yes. I'm looking for an old friend who is, uh... Don't be afraid to say it, honey. This is a hospice. It's okay. David flushed, looking down into her warm brown eyes. Like many healers, she radiated compassion. Dying, my friend Gwyneth. I'm sorry, I, I don't know her last name now. She married, after we last spoke. G-W-Y-N-E-T-H? Yes. This way, hon. Entering this place was hard enough. It was harder standing in the private room, watching for movement from her unresponsive form. It was too late. Placing a bouquet of flowers by her bedside, he left. He dreamt of the first night they'd met, dancing by the fires of Lunasa, when a knife-like pain stabbed his heart, tearing him from his sleep. Raggedly gasping, he curled around what felt like a torn hole in his chest, knowing this meant she was gone. David held on to the last note of the song, letting the wail of the guitar pierce the hearts of the surrounding crowd. The silence at the end was cut short by a roar of appreciation. He felt some of the tension drain from his body. Music and dance had always been his refuge. He'd been empty since Gwyneth's death. It had felt right to debut a new song for her on Samhain night. He looked on as the band stepped down to join the fans. The party would continue. However, he had other plans tonight. It had just been a week, he thought, as he entered his quiet house, shedding his clothes on the way to the shower. As he washed away the day's dirt, a silver necklace with emerald stars shimmered under the gentle warm flow of water. Dressed in simple robes, David padded into the kitchen to collect the night's offerings for Gwyneth, fragrant mead and cake topped with the sweetest summer berries. He placed everything on the outdoor altar, hoping his apology could reach her. I feared seeing you dying, Gwyneth. I let it delay me. I didn't get there in time to say goodbye. How did we grow so close, and suddenly I wasn't even a friend to you? Now you've gone. David poured his share of the mead, trying to remember the times they spent together. But it was no use, just emptiness. In a flash of anger, David ripped off the necklace, throwing it into the wild spaces behind the house before sinking down beside the altar in abject misery. The evening breeze caressed his blonde locks, feeling almost like hands. Then he realized they were hands, gentle, soft hands that felt warm in the cool night air. Hands perfumed with the mix of coconut oil and lavender she used to make. A scent he used to drown in, wrapped around her every night. 
Gwyneth. Not the frail Gwyneth from the hospital. His vibrant Gwyneth. You never failed me, David. Never. I wouldn't have had the life I did without you. Gwyneth. How? Why? My love is a fae, and he asks how I step through the veil on Halloween. He had to smile at her gentle laugh. Gwyneth laid a hand to her neck, the firelight catching on the silver chain and emerald stars. She seemed so solid, but you could see the altar through her body. We have tonight, Dahimak Navad, David Tuath. Your spell is undone, the price paid. Remember, my love. Gwyneth pressed her lips to his, using all the will in her soul to free him. David's true memories tore through the hazy block of his spell. That first year together, how long it took for her to accept that he wasn't kidding about the whole elf thing, exploring fey lands and each other until year two when she moved in with him. Year three when she slyly asked if he had any advice on raising a half fey child. To year four, while mourning the loss of their little girl, the cancer Gwyneth had fought off as a child returned to claim her. Maybe a year, maybe five years more, but his love would die. Her dreams and desire for family unfulfilled, all her now narrowed to one cruel fate. David, if I had known what you were going to do, I'd never have said yes. Decades ago, you worked your greatest magic. You offered the most important thing to you in exchange for my life. I thought it would take my immortality, my magic. I never thought it would take my love for you. You of all people know magic isn't afraid to demand the most. You gave me the greatest gift. Time, a full life, my great kids. Martin was a good man. My only regret was the cost. Gwyneth touched the necklace around her throat, a gift from happier times. You gave me everything. She kissed the tears that ran down David's cheek, drawing him to her. And I do it again, every time. I don't want to say goodbye, Gwyneth. This is just until we meet again. I'll come every Samhain. As long as you want me to, as long as you remember me. For the first time in a long time, David truly smiled. I won't waste a second longer. Gwyneth Maknavad, will you dance with me this summer? In this world and any world after it, I will dance with you, Dahi Maknavad. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Hauntingly Humdrum. This episode was written and performed by Georgia McKenzie. Sound design by Gabby Hall. The music used for the intro and outro of the podcast is The Show Must Be Go by Kevin MacLeod. Links for transcripts and casting crew information can be found in the show notes. Happy Halloween!